In fact, they were in India. Now, skip ahead three years. What's happened? It's very simple. These people started to make more money. Yeah, for a while they were working for 30 cents an hour, a dollar an hour, three dollars an hour. <clears throat> I used to be a consultant to Zach's Investment Research. Zach's does all their investment research just about this point in India. You think they're paying these people three dollars an hour? No. They're paying them hundred thousand dollars a year. Why are they using India? Do you know what it costs to do it in this country? Try six hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars. This is an industry I'm intimately familiar with. I just never hit the six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm still working on that. By the time I'm 85, I'm in it. Um, but the standard of living is going up in these countries. It's even the case in China. China's standard of living is going up. These people are starting to complain. They're saying, hey, I don't want to live in a hole. I have seen, and in fact, there's a big World's Fair going to be opening up in May in Singapore, and the Chinese population, they're expecting 80 million visitors, are going to get a, a taste of what it's like to live in the, quote, Western world. Why do you think people like China and Iran want to keep a clamp down on things like Google? They don't want their people knowing what a good life is like. One other point I want to make to you real quick, I promise it'll only take five, two, two more minutes, and that's the U.S. dollar, because it plays a key role here. You hear time and time again that the U.S. dollar is going in the toilet. Not true. We are the strongest economy in the world. We have the only currency that people trust implicitly. When times get tough in the world, what do people rush to? They rush to U.S. Treasury securities. They rush to the dollar. They don't rush to the euro, especially nowadays. They don't go for the Japanese yen or the Australian dollar. No, they go for U.S. dollars. Uncle Sam says he will make the payments on any bond that comes due. You can, rest assured, I will make it a 100% probability that if you hold a U.S. Treasury bond, when it comes due, Uncle Sam will pay you. Period. Now you say, is the dollar worth anything? The dollar is worth the amount of goods you can go to the store and get for it. Now, we have full faith and, and credit of the U.S. government behind that dollar. Dollar is a piece of paper. They say Federal Reserve note on it. They used to say silver certificate. If you look at what some of the parties out there right now, the Libertarian Party, they want to get rid of the Fed. They want to go back to a gold standard. This is such a absolutely nuts as I can't tell you. If we went back to a gold standard, which means you have to have gold to back up every dollar, the economy would contract, and if you thought 1929 was bad, that was a tea party. No pun intended. So you're not going back to a gold standard. That's a physical impossibility. You will have to take, as the rest of the world does, the dollar hay. If you don't want them, as I told, I said many times, anybody who has surplus pieces of paper that have 10 or $20 numbers on them, they don't want them, stack them up here, I promise you I'll find a home for them. Right there. Just now, the, the dollar is not going to hell in the handbasket. I know about it. The economy is not going to hell in the handbasket. We do have some problems. We do need to get the deficit down. We do need to do something about national debt. And, what's that? And, the only way you're going to start to do that is if you taper down our expenses at the war. That's all. Yes. Uh, you're, you're going on and the, and the assurance that things are going to work out down the road. Uh, there's an old uh, line in, in, in uh, Annie where Daddy Warbucks... You know, I, read, I know. I'm, I'm back from that generation. See, well, gray hair, no <laughs> hair. He's talking to FDR. Uh -huh. And he's saying, you know, in the long run, things are going to work out, FDR. And FDR said, well, in the short run, Daddy, they're going to starve to death. Now, my question to you goes to the issue. We have, there's this huge article in the New York Times about the, the complete collapse of our water sewer system alone. That I read the article. Okay. The, the Chinese are planning and building 
high speed and intermediate rail, 5,000 some miles, high speed rail going over 200 miles an hour from mm -hmm. one city to I'm the next. With, I'm familiar with the program. Yeah, yeah. Now this puts ordinary people to work because you have to build road beds. You don't need high wage people to do that. We could employ those people this way. GE has the engine capacities for these trains. We have the bodies needing the work right now. And this, to me, is a greater problem of putting bread in the mouth so these people don't starve to death in the short run. And that's what FDR looked at. And when he came in, he put in the CCC camps and the WPA. I'll tell you what, you and I are going up to Tallahassee tomorrow, and we'll explain that program to you. <laughs> Fine. I am a, I'm just kidding, I've never been in Tallahassee, don't plan to. I, I don't think, a mess. I, I don't think my heart could take it, okay? <laughs> um, I have a real problem with politicians. For those of you who don't know, most of you may or may not know, I was going to do what Rick was going to do, okay? Going to I was going to run <laughs> against Buchanan. In fact, I was relishing the idea of running against Buchanan. In fact, it kept me up all night thinking of what I was going to do to that man. <laughs> Yes, I'm a rabid liberal, okay? <laughs> rabid would probably be a very good word to use here now. Um, the difficulty was the newspaper said, you'll lose your newspaper column. Now, let me explain to you, I didn't introduce myself properly. I have been a newspaper columnist for 22 years. I write for papers around the country, have a readership of about 6 million readers. I do not get paid for that column. I donate a column. I write six of them, actually. I write six columns a week and I donate that to um, the good of mankind. Yeah, I'm not that great a guy, believe me. Um, I also teach economics, and I teach investment analysis, and I donate my time for both courses. I teach adults like yourself how to protect themselves against what happened. So, um, yes, I have written, and we were supposed to have a high-speed rail system from here to Tampa, from Tampa to Orlando, from Jacksonville to um, Miami. Miami, long time ago. And in fact, the Florida voters said, hey, they voted for it, they put it in the Constitution. Twice. Twice. And who got it put out? Mr. Bush. Jeb, Jeb who, Bush. Jeb Bush, who was your governor, your governor. Put I, I question time. whether he's my governor. He put it up a third time, confusing the people, and they voted it down. Absolutely. That's why I say, if you don't educate the general population, and I wish you luck, I've been trying for 22 years, and I won't say I've been overly successful. If I can get one person out of 100 to do what I suggest, and I can save them from what they went through in 2008, I consider myself to be lucky. But. I am all in favor, and I think the man is 100% correct. We should put a high-speed rail system all throughout Florida. Why are we doing it? I will give you a couple of reasons. One, the lines, they want to use the current rail lines, the current freight lines. The current freight lines are not...